Well, every single one of them is one foot too tall. Now we get to fix that. Welcome back to our debt-free off-grid homestead in North Idaho. We're continuing to build our house here and today we're actually gonna be starting to build our deck. It's gonna go right up here, 30 feet long by 12 feet. So it's 30 by 12 deck. Today we're gonna put in the footers for the posts. So our posts are gonna be set 11 feet away from the house. Right now we're just rough marking where that's gonna be so we can put up our batter boards and get started laying out our string line so we can put our posts in exactly the right spot. Two stakes in. This will be our board that's gonna go across here. We can attach our string to it, going down that way. Go ahead and make this level so it'll be easier later just in case. First one done. First one, let's go do the other side. Then we can start looking at our strings. Big string time, guys. Wow. All right, so what we did was we measured from the building out here to 11 feet. We marked it right here, 11 feet. Wrapped our string around it and then eyeballed it kind of straight down that way. Then we went down here. Let me show you how we adjusted it. All right, so Jules had the tape. You see, was holding it up here, right at the building like that. Then I held it down here, right, and we wanted to get to 11. But where exactly is it, right? So you take your tape measure, and you can move it this way, and it starts to get longer. That means you're not square with the building. All right, come this way, getting longer. So right there, and that tells you that's actually 11 feet right there. The edge of our deck is going to be right here at this seam, which is the edge of the garage right here. And this right here is where our first post is going to be. So we're just marking this so that we can go measure on the other side with the string. I'll tell you what's really cool about the way that we're actually laying out the deck post for this. There'll be a cantilever on the deck. Actually, there's a cantilever on the sides of the deck and the front of the deck, which would be behind me. And with this setup, it doesn't have to be 100% perfect because the posts aren't going through the deck for the railing. The deck's gonna actually sit on top of a beam on top of these posts. Anyway, you'll see when we get there. Jules <coughs> is holding it at the one foot mark. I come down here, trying to find, huh, we're not at 11 anymore. There we go, right about there. We got our marks on the ground where all of our holes are gonna be. This will be our first post. Number two here, number three, number four, and this will be our last one right here, number five. So they're seven feet apart. I was hoping to be able to park the tractor underneath here. Let's go measure the tractor and see how wide it is. Tractor is still broken, guys. Parts are on back order. Sad little one eye. And he's parked like right where the shed is gonna be. The shed is gonna be like right on top of the front of the tractor. <laughs> still done on projects. Yes, we got a plan though. We'll share that plan with you in a little while on how we're gonna try to fix it more speedily. Here you go, you're about even here. Oh yeah, we got plenty of space to park the tractor under there. Really? Yeah, it doesn't look like it. What about the implements? Let's try it, let's look at this. This is probably our widest one. What you got? Right out here, seven feet. Wow. Yeah, that's it. Well, that's cool. exciting. When well, I'll get a place to park. Yeah. Out of the snow. We're thinking about putting a roof underneath the deck, like screwed to the bottom of the deck. Not to the deck but to the joists and that way all the water and rain that falls on the deck will run off and underneath the deck will stay dry give us extra storage space for dry stuff in the winter we got our string positions marked and now i guess we take the string off we start bigging digging deep big holes <laughs> bigging deep holes we're gonna big some deep holes some right. bigging some bigging holes good morning friends how is everybody hi bucky looking for bugs the rest of us Exhausting, huh? Yeah. <laughs> it's hard work, man. You're getting pretty dirty, too. Isn't there a tool for this? Like a machine for this? Yeah, there's a giant post hole <laughs> digger. Attaches to your tractor. <laughs> Do we know anybody who owns one? <laughs> no. You can rent them, though, if you have a tractor to hook it to. Hmm. There lies the problem. It'll <laughs> yeah. take a few hours to get all this done, though. Dance with me. What are you doing there? 
What are you doing? My arms. My arm muscles. They're not working anymore. All right, let's see here. 24. Oh, yeah, we're good. Oh, nice. What tool are you using there? It's a scope for feed, I think, for animal feed. It works super good. <laughs> I probably look ridiculous, though. But it's light and it scrapes the bottom really smooth. Just taking a quick little lunch break, guys. Jules is uh, feeding Tux there some peanut butter. <laughs> they came off of her delicious peanut butter and honey sandwich. Because I'm extending my life. Don't oh, that's you, right. Right? Isn't that what the, the newest medical reports are? Extending my life by how many minutes by eating peanut butter sandwich? Yeah, so Jules is extending her life. I'm probably shortening my life by eating cheese sticks <laughs> and meat sticks right here. Combo pack. I know, man, not a very exciting lunch, but let me know down in the comments below. Which one would you rather eat? Peanut butter and honey sandwich or cheese and meat sticks? Also, let me show you this. Jules has been doing some organizing here. It's kind of dark back here, but you'll get the picture. Oh, look at that, man. All getting organized. Bam, look at that. Totes down there. Oh, all kinds of goodness, guys. You know, that's not sponsored stuff in there, man. We spend our own money to buy Thrive Life. We cook with it every day, but it's also our storage food. Highly recommend it, guys. If you want to check out Thrive Life, if you're thinking about storing up some food that is not like you know, mac and something, hamburger, you gotta eat it for like three months straight, the same thing over and over again, like you get in those buckets. This stuff you can use in like your regular meals. Jules has already done some recipes using Thrive Life, only Thrive Life foods. It's actually really good stuff. Last 25 years, I'll put a link down in the description below if you wanna check it out, guys. You're thinking about storing up some stuff or you just want the convenience of freeze-dried food, Thrive Life's pretty good. Delicious life shortening lunch. You guys hear about that study that some university put out there on how like, you know, you can extend your life by eating peanut butter and jelly sandwiches or shorten your life by eating hot dogs. It was all over the radio a few days ago. That's what we're joking around about. We're just cutting the rebar that's gonna go down through the footer and up into the sauna tube that we're gonna use to form up like the piers, I guess you call them. All right, got our five rebars and we'll just go out here, double check, make sure absolutely 100% where they're gonna go down into the concrete. Time to mix up some concrete, pour it in these holes, get the rebar set. That'll be the footer. After it dries, we'll put the sauna tubes on top, get it all set. So we gotta get our tools ready, then we'll start carrying concrete out. All right, I'll hold it, you scoop it in there, okay? okay. We got two bags of concrete in the hole. I'm just putting a piece of rebar in there. A little bit off the of center here so that when we put the, the part down into the concrete, the bolt doesn't hit the rebar, but they'll overlap. All right, man, one down. Good morning, guys. Another beautiful day here on the homestead. Clear skies and concrete in holes. Check it out, this is what we got done yesterday. Bam, oh yeah. Footers down there for our posts that are gonna be in there. And yes, some of the holes got dug a little bit off the of center. I'm sure it's gonna be fine, but that's the way it is. This one right here may be the best one. This one's pretty good. And this one's getting a little bit off. Oh no, this one's more off. And this one is, mm, well, you can see what it's like there. Got some supplies today. Unfortunately, man, I think this is just gonna be the way of the world now. When you want something, they're not gonna have it. We wanted sauna tubes. They didn't have them. So we got these concrete blocks right here. Instead, we'll be using these to come up off of that footer, rebar up the middle there to mount our bracket to holding the post 
for holding the post. The cool thing about these is though, they're actually cheaper than sauna tubes and they take less concrete. I'm gonna give them a try today. One nice thing about the sauna tubes is that you can cut them to whatever length you want. Notice here, bam, right? Our holes are not all exactly the same depth or the same width. So the concrete levels vary a little bit, about two inches over the whole thing. So we're gonna have to cut some of these blocks to make it level all the way across. So you notice this one right here is right at the string level and this one right here is just below the string level. Now I know we could just do that and then cut the posts to all be the same height so that the top of the posts are level, but I think I want it leveled down here because I think that'll look better for one and make it easier cut all the posts the same length. Yeah, it'll just be easier, I think. We're gonna find out. I got a diamond saw blade. We're gonna cut these guys. All right, so this one right here is gonna be our standard, and it is two and nine sixteenths away from the string. We went ahead and cut this one without showing you guys because it took forever to like figure it out, but this one is now two and nine sixteenths from the string. So now we'll show you the process. First of all, we're gonna get these guys where they need to be distance wise. Posts are seven feet on center. Needs to go that way a quarter of an inch. First of all, we're gonna go ahead and draw a line that is in the center here so that we can uh, make sure that we get it lined up with the string so it's square to the building. So we'll go ahead and we'll put this guy on here, get her all lined up. Now we can see that we need to go this way a little bit. And then when we measure from over here, which these are seven feet on center. So we'll measure from the far side to the near side here. So we need to go this way a half an inch and we need to go that way a half an inch. We're centered on the lines right here, seven feet on center. That ought to do it. Now we have gotta figure out how much of this block we need to cut off. All right, so we're one and five sixteenths inches away from the string. We need to be two and nine sixteenths away. So we need to be one and four sixteenths or one and two eighths or one and one quarter inch away or we need to cut off of here. One and a quarter inches. Let's go over to the tailgate and we'll mark it up and cut it. All right, so we're just measuring down one and a quarter inches all the way around. We cut this line all the way off. And that'll be right at one and a quarter. That's why we measure twice, huh? Measure twice, cut once. Although this time we're cutting four times. Need some safety glasses. I met you in the sun. Saw my plans come undone. Cause I knew you were the one. So we from Paris saw what need with the letter and the ring. You know what that reminds me of? What? Hold it up. A donut. <laughs> no. Cat food. Crackling oat bran. Crackling oat bran. <laughs> yeah. That cool, stuff's man. delicious. All right, let's go see how she fits. Two and nine sixteenths. Hey, Marty. You're yelling at us. Oh, sorry. <laughs> Two and nine sixteenths, guys. <laughs> I mean, maybe it's a 30 second off, but it's right there. In the day I met you, I think I met myself. I don't ever want to be with anyone else. We got the kind of story that the stories would tell. Different than I've ever felt. These bumps right here are giving us a little bit of trouble making it wobbly. This is the last one, guys. We've got to cut off two and 15 sixteenths of an inch. You might be thinking, that's way too specific. It doesn't even matter. That's probably true. It probably doesn't matter. But the best we can get it down here will make it a lot easier to get it good up top. At least that's my thinking anyway, because I'm not a pro, man. So I need a good foundation. And I am holding my breath. The wind is blowing away from me, so I'm trying not to breathe any of this in. I don't have any masks, I don't think. I don't even know. If I did, I probably wouldn't wear it. We're just being careful and breathing shallowly and holding my breath. You're my sunshine every morning. Light up every moment, make my every dream come true. Oh, I can't describe it. Two, two and a half or a sixteenth off. I think a sixteenth would be okay. What do you think, Joss? I think in the overall scheme of things, a sixteenth isn't bad. That's right. <laughs> What's going on in here? Making some new ones of these to hold the J bolts up. In your secret cave? Yes, in my secret man cave. <laughs> hey, you got a new nozzle? Yeah. Koi. Yeah. All the garden stuff at Walmart is on clearance right now. If you want to stock up for next year, that'd be a good time. Not sponsored by Walmart, by the way. So how many bags do you think it's going to take? What's your guess to fill for, one? For, at Home Depot, I estimated like one and maybe a little bit more. But looking at it now, I'm thinking two bags. 
Two bags per per, per hole? Oh, wow. Maybe. Okay. I hope not, because we don't have enough concrete for that. Jules is shoveling the concrete in, and I'm just settling it all down in there with our stick here. That first one actually took less than a whole bag. Yeah, I was surprised. Maybe three quarters? Maybe. We cut that first rebar that we put in yesterday a little short, so we're just adding some more. We had some extra rebar. Getting it just below the surface so that it doesn't want to crack. If we ran into it with a tractor or something, it'll be a little bit more stable with that extra rebar. It's overlapping six inches in there. So we're using these brackets right here, just making sure it doesn't come up too high. Make sure we're square. All right, look guys, they're all in place. And we didn't end up needing these because the brackets worked perfect. So we put the bracket right on top there. It fit right on top of the block with just a little tiny bit so we could square it up and center it. Super easy, whole solid like cylinder, square cylinder, column of concrete going all the way down to the footer, rebar going through the footer all the way up to the very top of each of these piers. We only ended up needing three bags of concrete. Yeah, we, we had to dump like half a bag in the hole. Yeah, so we got four bags extra plus the two that we already had at home. So we're ready for another project. Another Morgan here on the homestead, guys. Getting ready to put our posts in. First, though, we got to get these guys bolted down. All full of concrete. I got the little spot right where this thing goes because we set it here, squared it up, leveled it when we poured the concrete. So put a washer in there and then put a bolt on. What you got there? Here we've got my big socket set. And that size is 15 sixteenths. I mean, that's almost one inch. Don't you think that... We've gotten a lot better with fractions since we started building. Yeah, <laughs> go ahead and just tighten these guys down. Okay, one down. All right, so we're gonna just measure, get a rough estimate on how long this ledger board needs to be. And that way we know which two by tens to pick out to put up there. 18 and a half. We could use a 16, but then that's just a two foot piece that would go on the end. Hmm. We've got four 16 footers. We need those to build the beams. The rest are all 12 footers. And we've got like three that are no good. We went to a lumber store. They say, we do not sort lumber. And so we bought like, I don't know, 18 two by 10 by 12s. Three of them are bad. So this one, this whole side right here, this little end is all broken off. This second one has this really gnarly spot right here. These are like huge like knots and just look at that. That's just awful. Not the quality we want to use on our house. This last one here, take a look at this end, you guys. It's almost like termites have been in it or something. It's really bad. It's so, so soft and just awful. I feel like sad that they would give us wood like this. It's time for the chicks to start going outside. <laughs> maybe to get integrated a little bit with the rest of our chickens. I'd like them to merge into the existing flock pretty naturally. So today's the first day outside. Chase down a brand new adventure. Step up, step out and into <laughs> So their mom is a Polish, black and white Polish, and then their dad is a Buckeye. And look at how much red you can already see on a lot of them. They're like little, loud, awkward adolescents right now. They're so gentle. <laughs> I think I would have just dumped them out. <laughs> I want them to be my friends. They're about three weeks old right now. There you go. Ooh, they got a bug already. They're not sure what to do. <laughs> <laughs> Got their food and water in here, guys, and so we'll just see how they handle it today.
We've got our ledger board set up here. I'm gonna hold it up here. Jules is down there with the level. And she's gonna set it down there where it goes. Right now, we're just getting it up here. After we get it up here and set with the screws, we'll go ahead and actually fasten it to the wall appropriately. Take a look at this, guys. I think we got it pretty level. Looks good to me. I got this feeling of fire <laughs> That's a Marty move. Watch me reach up, all right, our next piece is two feet, two and a three quarter inches. That's what we got to cut off and we're going to cut it off of one of those junky pieces of wood that we got. <laughs> Let's put her up. I bet Safety Sally says, don't climb a ladder with both hands full. Three points of contact at all times. She probably does. And she's probably very smart. She lives longer than everybody else. Maybe not me though, because I eat peanut butter sandwiches. Oh, well, that's true, man. <laughs> Gotta make up for all the hot dogs I've eaten. We're on the wrong side for me to get a good angle. <laughs> a good shot. Can you switch hands? <laughs> no. I can't switch hands, man. <laughs> I can't see what you're doing though. Just getting the screw started here. Now we need to measure down and mark every two feet because that's where the, the support for the floor joist is every two feet in here. And that way we can anchor this uh, rim joist, anchor it solidly to the wall. We're going to use some big timber lock type screws to anchor this guy in there. I thought it was a ledger board. Yeah, what'd I call it? A rim joist? Yep, ledger board. Ledger. Thanks, Jules. <laughs> I don't know. I you saved the day, man. Was thinking. You saved like people a thousand <laughs> comments. <laughs> And we might cut that out so you guys can comment and correct me. <laughs> well, maybe I'm wrong. Well, they'd let us know which one. <laughs> I think you're right. You let guys us... <laughs> confirm it. Is Jules right? Ledger board or rim joist? So Marty's up there right now just confirming that it is two feet. Is that right? Yeah. All right. To the first one because it's doubled up on the outside there. To the inside of the OSB, it's 26 and a half inches. To the first support. And then after that, it's two feet all the way down. All right. Oh, caution. Attention. What's Percussion. What's question? Or something like that. We're at 16 feet, man. That's the max that the tape measure can go. <laughs> Stop. I'm sure that's really good pronunciation. <laughs> I have no idea what even language that is. Probably Spanish and something else, I guess. French, maybe? But is it? What's alto is stop, huh? Yeah. It says stop in English, but it doesn't say alto in Spanish. <laughs> I don't know. Anyway, we need to change tape measures. It's time for post, guys. We want to find out where the top of the uh, rim joist, rim joist, nope, ledger, ledger board, board, where the top of the ledger board to right here, right here. We want to know how tall that is. So that's kind of difficult to figure out, but I got a plan. We've got our laser level set up over here. We're measuring down from right here to right here, 10 feet, 11 and seven eighths of an inch. What we're going to do is use our laser level and we're going to find out what the difference is from here to the top of that pillar is or whatever you call that thing all right there that's perfect all right so we set it here we'll go over there and find out what the difference is since these marks right here aren't really exact it's like an eighth of an inch right there so we're just going to go ahead and mark it right here and then we'll check it over here now we put it right here and we start moving it up till we get a constant solid beep okay so we'll go ahead and mark this guy we'll measure it and then we'll add it to what that was. So we're looking at 28 and 11 sixteenths. We better write that down. Hold 28 on. and 11 sixteenths. So right now we add these down. ones together here and see what we get. All right, so uh, we went through it. We need our posts to be 11 feet, 10 and 1 16th inches on this one. Then we went through the entire process again. We got the same exact numbers. Same exact numbers. Remeasured, reused the level checked all of them and everything and so we're fairly confident and we measured our beam or our posts yep and they're long enough yeah they're like 12 feet three quarters of an inch long so we got to cut those down a little bit and we're not going to put a slope in it i just read on dex.com so it's got to be true reliable source if you have your decking with spaces you know like regular conventional decking like two by material then you don't need to slope it at all. So we're not going to slope it. Let's cut our posts. Look at our crazy math. We're crazy. Lots of math.
These are our connector pieces here. Goes on like this, and then the beam will set in here. So we're gonna go ahead and attach them while they're down here on the ground, because I think that'll be a lot easier than 12 feet up in the air. Since it's the middle one, we're gonna put on this other piece. This one right here goes in the middle one. You know why? Because there's a, another beam that goes in the middle. This is our cross bracing, not a cross bracing, I don't know, angle bracing or something to hold the posts up straight. Kind of eyeballing where we want it so we can put the stake in down here. Basically that far away. It's gonna be lined up right there, just like that. So we'll put a stake in right down there. So when I put the post up, it'll look just like that one. Check it out, we didn't even record that one. So I'm wondering how we're gonna get the beam up there, Jules. When well, we got one 12 foot ladder and these little eight foot ones. And that thing is like 12, 13 feet tall. So what's eight plus my six is what? 14. 14, oh, psh. I could do it. Dude. I could stand right on the very top of that ladder and we can reach up there. No standing. It says no standing, Marty. Well, it's a joke. It, it's, a, it's a practical joke for St. Patrick's Day or something. Spread my wings and let go. Something stirring in my soul. I feel it again, feel it again. Feel it again, feel it again. Unlock the cage and free my heart. This is where the journey starts. Now it begins, now it begins. This is gonna be one tall deck. Look at how tall that thing is, man. It's gonna be so cool. Seth's gonna jump off of it into the snow. Yikes. Does if that we what get he... a cat, we'll throw the cat off into the snow. All right, so the question is, is can I get up the, can I carry the beam on one side? Jill's carrying it on the other ladder. Carry it up here. Oh. Lift it up, set it on the side. Wow. Put it back on this side. It's so heavy. Oh man, I don't know. <laughs> you see how beautiful these are, guys? They are all perfectly plumb. Oh, it looks like perfectly in a row, square with the building, ready to start building the beam and putting it up there. But check this out. When I measured to find the difference between the top of that two by four right over there and the top of the pier, look at what I did. I took my tape measure and just to make sure that we were accurate, I put it right there on the one foot mark and then I put it down here and I said it's 28 and some odd inches. And we use that number to then figure out how tall they needed to be. Do you see the problem, man? Uh, we did it twice even and they're a foot too tall. Every single one of them is one foot too tall. Now we get to fix that. 